Hello and welcome to HCarts. Carts, coming to you from the Three Sister Circuit in Wigan because this is the second meeting of the 2019 We're BUKC season. Today. Indeed, this is the second meeting of the 2019 BUKC season, and the first time the series has ever visited the Three Sisters circuit in Wigan. But before the action even started, we had a problem. Only seven of us had turned up, as John Brown's car broke down on the way, so Jack Hodges ended up taking part in two sprint races and two endurance races. More on that later. Another notable absence was Alex Gunn, who had an on-the-day assignment that he couldn't get out of because his repeated requests to get it moved were ignored. In the meantime, the track walk saw 18 returnee Aaron Walsh getting his shapes mixed up. It's literally a square. And Brickle's feeling a bit perplexed by the circuit. It's an enormous straight. The choker wouldn't have much time to dwell over that fact as he was out for the first race, alongside Jack Linus. To make Brickles' race even more precarious, the track was wet and he was starting from the utterly dreadful position of first, while Linus was in ninth. To his surprise, Brickles actually had a good start and led the race. For one and a half corners, he assumed third at the end of the first lap, while Linus gained two positions to be seventh. The racing Linus gained a couple more positions on the next lap, one of which came at the expense of Brickles, who ran wide at the exit of Luna Bend, and had a feisty pack to deal with as well. Some of which included Nottingham C, Oxford Brooks B, and Coventry B. Eventually though, Brickles found a rhythm, and even had the nerve to repass Loughborough A for ninth. Meanwhile Linus became involved in a three-car scrap for the final podium spot with Coventry A and Oxford Brooks B, which ended with Linus being the ham, or falafel for you vegans, in a sandwich as he took fourth. As for Brickles, he would ruin his race on lap 12 as he picked up a cone penalty, and the actual cone itself. A few other drivers in the paddock noticed his antics with reports of it making Swansea's morning, and even Jacob Harris wanted to know his secret. Initially it was about a second a lap, but once he adjusted, maybe about half a second, three tenths, somewhere around that area. He finished the race in 23rd, having acquired a new nickname, although he did receive praise from the Kern, who said that he'd been surprisingly gentle. Next time, stop. The next race saw Sam Turn and not John Brown take to the track. Both Huddersfield drivers started in the top half, and their first laps featured varying degrees of success, with Turn moving up to 5th and Hodges dropping down to 25th. On the second lap, while Northumbria B went surfing, the Jackhammer was involved in another incident and dropped to 33rd, but from there he recovered to finish 22nd. The turntables race was considerably more fruitful, as he showed tremendous pace to finish 2nd, Huddersfield's first top 3 finish since race 11 in the qualifiers. As was the case in Buckmore, Huddersfield couldn't be bothered with the middle two races of the sprints. This allowed Aaron Walsh to get ready for his first BUKC race of 2019, and during that gap, he had somehow managed to clone Sam Turn's race suit. Despite this, Captain Chaos kept his head on the first lap and moved from 25th to 13th on a circuit that now had a fully dry line, but was greasy elsewhere, as demonstrated by this melee. Actual Jack Hodges was also in this race, and once again his first lap was a disaster. But at least his overalls were dry, unlike that of Nottingham C. He quickly recovered to bring himself thick into the midfield pack and eventually finished 17th. Walsh spent the entirety of his race in combat with pretty much everyone, and although he was 11th on the road, he was pushed down to 14th after picking up an ABC penalty. Afterwards, he skulked towards the weighing area, contemplating whether duplicating turns overalls was a good idea after all. 
The final sprint race of the day saw both Stephen Letts and Ollie Milner in action, although there were some concerns as Milner's middle finger cramp had returned. But that was nothing compared to Letts' first lap. Coming out of turn 7, Letts was on the inside of a three-wide scrap, which then converted into a wheelie thanks to Coventry A bringing themselves into the mix. For the early part of the race, Milner ran ahead of Letts before Litchfield's lieutenant got back in front, and back up to 13th behind Coventry A, before a second incident with a number 20 dropped Letts down to 19th. One more incident on the penultimate lap followed, and although it wasn't quite captured on camera, Brickles' reaction more or less summed it up. Oh, Jesus! Yeah, yeah. 18th became 33rd, plus a stern word from JV come the end of the race for a sheepish Stephen while Milner came 23rd after his own difficult race. Despite top 4 finishes in the first two races, the A-team came 8th overall, but only 4 points behind 2nd place, just to confirm how close and competitive this championship is. Having been 42nd overall in the Bookmore Sprint, the B-team improved to 41st place, but at least they beat a couple of Leeds teams. Letts was straight back out for the first endurance race of the day, and he was back in 26 for the start, which went a hell of a lot better than his entire sprint race. In typical Letts fashion, he stormed his way through the order, even if he was still getting a bit narky with other drivers. Nevertheless, he managed to resist the urge for carnage, and was in fifth when he handed over to Jack Linus for the final stint. He battled with Birmingham A for part of it, and eventually finished in that very fifth place. Coincidentally, Milner was also in this endurance race, but he had not John Brown as his teammate, which made the B team ineligible for this race. This was probably why the man with a golden Volvo picked up three separate penalties during the race, plus a shouting match with Leeds. As a result, Milner left his second stop until later to allow Hodges to conserve as much energy as possible for the B team's eligible sprint race. Interestingly, the Jackhammer managed to pick up a black flag near the end of the race on his way to 32nd. More on that later. Both teams were out again for the middle race of round 4, with Aaron Sam Turn Walsh starting 11th for the A team, and actual Jack Hodges starting 16th. How did Captain Chaos rate Huddersfield's Championship Challenge? We've had a bit of a rough start to the year with dropouts in the A team, um, so we've had to draft from the lower teams, but we did quite well in the endurance of Butmore, and top 10 finish for the sprint round this time, so hopefully we'll be able to pull something out of the bag. It was a decent enough start for both drivers, with Walsh remaining 11th and Hodges moving up to 12th, but on the second lap, Walsh was spun around at turn 2. Oh, no. Who was the culprit? The answer came a lap later, when Hodges received another black flag, his second in about 15 minutes and in two separate races. Possible candidate for Bandit of the Year? He'll do well to beat Kernman. Speaking of which, he appeared on track for the final segment of the B-team's race, and with no prospects of a top 20 result, Brickles was left to do his own thing. Thirty-second was where the B-team ended up. Meanwhile, Walsh staged a fine recovery drive from 35th to briefly run 10th before handing over to Sam Aaron Walsh turn who maintained the A-team's strong and consistent pace to eventually finish a quite remarkable 6th. So two top six finishes put the A-team 7th overall for round 4, and only 7 points behind round winners Oxford Brooks B, once again highlighting just how close and competitive this season is. Although not for Huddersfield B, who thanks to their ineligible first race, finished 2nd from bottom. Even Leeds D beat them. For the moment, the A-team sit 9th in the championship, while the B-team lie 37th. The next day featured the C-team and much more unpredictable weather for the Intermediates Championship. A minor reshuffle saw the return of Ben Hinchliffe, last seen facing the wrong way at the qualifiers. He had no such problems during a wet qualifying session, although he wasn't too pleased with 15th. His race saw probably the wettest conditions all day, with spray actually causing visibility problems, but despite this, the hinge was blistering. He was one of the fastest drivers throughout the race, and managed to finish in an excellent third. This was in spite of a moment where he backed it into the pit wall, did a 360, and carried on having only lost roughly 6 seconds. None of our lot were out for race 2 or the rookies race, but both saw a smattering of good racing and incidents to keep the Huddersfield crew entertained. So it's on to race 3, where Kernman was racing ineligibly. 
Perhaps it was because he had driven at the Three Sisters circuit the day before, but Brickles managed to qualify on pole position, the C team's first since Wilton Mill four years ago. Unlike his sprint race, Brickles wasn't able to hang on to the lead at the first corner. In fact, his engine wasn't working properly for the first few laps, but once it warmed up, he began to make progress. He was up to fifth before coming a cropper against York. It has been over a year since Brickles made his BUKC debut, and it finally took him until now to receive his first ever black flag. Having dropped down to as low as 17th, Brickles slowly caught up to an 8-way battle for 8th, which partly destructed on lap 21 at the exit of Luna. Having moved ahead of Swansea C on the next lap, Brickles then came across a battle in Cardiff A and Sheffield B for 9th, and snuck past a pair of them in one move to finish in that very position. Luke Bath was next out for race 4, and he had a nightmare qualifying session with an engine that couldn't even power a motorised tin opener. He qualified an I rate 20th. So the race got off to a false start. Take 2. So the race got off to a start, and the Bath Bomb's engine was much more to his liking, which allowed him to power his way up the order. Having been impressed by Brickles' double overtake, Bath attempted it himself, and succeeded. He eventually finished 7th, which he was more than happy with. The final race of the day featured Cleo Cinardi, and she once again showed some good speed in the wets by qualifying 17th, only a second behind the pole sitter. Like at Buckmore, she had a terrific start to move up to 11th at the start of the second lap, but unfortunately she became involved in a three-cart collision at the penultimate corner and came off worst of all. It could have been with King's College A and Liverpool B, but we'll leave it to them to confirm that. That's UCL A recovering their car at Turn 1, and that's Uni of Life abandoning theirs. As for Quick Cleo, she eventually finished in 26th, which was a shame as she showed good pace that matched those in the top 10. So despite Cornman's 9th place not counting towards the final results, Huddersfield C still managed to finish in a very creditable 15th, a 10 place improvement from Buckmore Park, and they currently sit 16th in the championship standings. The next meeting will see the BUKC return to Hlandau, which was last on the calendar in 2016, scene of Huddersfield A's victory in the second sprint. HCARTS would like to thank all our sponsors, and stay tuned and see you soon.